Yeah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let me call this meeting to order. This is the August meeting for the Wallace Lance County Zoning Board of Appeals. For the visitors in the audience or the applicants or whatever, would you please sign in on the back table if you have not already signed in for our record? The the way we operate, I will call each case by case number and case name. We will have a staff member come to the lectern, give us the basis of the request. The board will then have probably discussions and or questions. Once we have heard that case from the staff standpoint, I will ask if there are any persons here, applicant or otherwise, that would like to speak on behalf of the case. Please come to the lectern, give us your name and address for the record, give us the information you wish for us to take under advice. Once you have given us the information you feel like we need, or that you would like us to take under advisement, then I will ask if there are any persons here in opposition, or if any persons here have any questions. If there are people here in opposition or have questions, please come to the lectern, give us your name and address for the record. Give us the information you wish for us to take under advice. Normally, we will act on cases here today, however it is in our bylaws. If we feel like information is lacking or if uh, applicants request a postponement, we can postpone action until the next regularly scheduled meeting. Okay, the first case that we've got on the agenda is Lowndes County VAR 2014-08. Lowndes County Board of Commissioners for 6328 Lake Alapahal Boulevard in Naples. This case, we have uh, information that Lowndes County has asked that we postpone action. The county is still working out details. If you are here for that case, we will not be hearing anything on that case today. We will be hearing it next month in September, and it will be the second. Tuesday in September, not the first because of the Labor Day holiday weekend. Again, I have two questions, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, they asked for 60 days. That was for back in the July meeting, so which would have been equivalent to the September meeting. Okay. And do we need to have a motion to take? Yeah, I'm headed there. Okay. I need a motion to accept the request from Lowndes County to postpone that case until the September meeting. I have a motion from Mr. McCall. I have a second from Mr. Alvarado. All in favor, please raise a hand. Unanimous. Thank you. Next case we'll call will be Lowndes County case VAR 2014-09. Rick Wagner for 2969 Swamp Edge Road, Valdosta. Ms. Brown, will you have the floor? Good afternoon. Our first case before you today is a variance by Mr. Rick Wagner. He's requesting a variance to our lot frontage requirement. As you can see on the presentation, Mr. Wagner has about 60 some odd acres um, that is zoned RA, residential agriculture. He desires to sell the property and the buyer just wants assurance that they can pull a permit to either build or place a manufactured home on the property. Um, at this time, no permits can be issued to that property because there is no recorded survey flat. And the reason, you know, it can't be recorded because there is no frontage on a county maintained road. The property will be ac accessed from Mud Swamp Road, which is a private road. Both Mud Swamp, Swamp Edge are all private roads. Um, and the only way you can, you know, have, you know, frontage is, is through the variance process. Um, the applicant doesn't intend to subdivide the property any further. If they do decide to subdivide the property any further, they have to come back through this process. Staff looked at this and, and saw, you know, there was no creation of any new lots. Um, we would be concerned if they did decide to come and subdivide more lots from that property. But at this time, with the lot being as it is, we didn't see any problem with them accessing the property. Um, I did try to get a photo of the current um, access. The top is the intersection of Indian Ford Road and Mud Swamp, which is a private road, and the bottom 
photo is the actual driveway they're going to use to get to that 60 acres. Um, staff looked at this, offered a recommendation of approval uh, <coughs> um, with no conditions. Do they need a recorded easement to use that driveway? The easement will be shown on that survey. It has to be shown. There's, I tried to give a historical view of that property. Um, there's a survey in there that shows that, it shows it as a private road and that will be carried on to that new survey. So that the buyer and both Mr. Wagner knows that's the way to access that property. Any other questions? Okay, Discussions at this time. Can I ask a question? Just a moment, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Bradley. Is there anyone here, the applicant, or someone who wishes to speak on behalf of the applicant? Are you the applicant? Okay. I mean, I was kind of, I'm Richard Wagner. I was kind of shocked when I got this because I had a contract on it where someone wanted to buy it. Excuse me one second. Can I get your name and address for the record just okay. so we'll have it? Richard Wagner, 5282, at Nelly Drive North, Lake Park. Thank you. All right. Okay. Um, we had a contract on it for sale. And when they went down to the county, they said they couldn't build a house there or, or change the trail. We do have a trail around the property now. And we got that permitted in 2002, and no one questioned anything. We got the septic tank permitted electric brought down there and then when we went to sell it uh, they said it wasn't legal so that's what we're trying to do is get access where it's a variance for legal access off it's off Mount Tussle Road is what they named it now. Okay and your intent is to sell it and the person that is buying it is by chance here? No he cancels but you know I just want to make sure it's proper the next time. The next okay. Time we have are you planning on doing any other improvements or changing out the mobile home that exists? Or no. is this is just simply to make it a legal access through a private road? Yes, sir. Where if someone wishes to put a new mobile home or build a house there, they should. Okay, and you, <coughs> you do understand what Mr. Rather said a second ago about if you try to go in there and do any kind of subdivision or put any kind of house Absolutely. there, then you still got to go through this process again be able to do that. Uh, no desire to do that. Okay. Anything else you'd like to add? That's it. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else here in support of this action? Is there anyone here in opposition or has I'm a question? I'm not in opposition, but I just have a question. That's, that's fine. Would you come to the lectern, please? Yeah. Uh, my name is Wanda Brantley, 2878 Most Swamp Road. Actually, it's Swamp Edge, but when they changed it, it was confused and we because at first it was the Blanton Road address. Um, anyway, I have a question to ask you about this. This is Swamp Edge right here, right? This right here? That's okay. my tussle. This turns off, huh? That's my tussle. What? You're talking about over there by Darrell's? Yeah, that goes down to Darrell's. To yours. Okay, so this goes down to Darrell's. Okay, then it's not where I can thought you it was. Up the slide so she can... I was thinking it was the swamp edge. What you see is that first driveway. The first driveway. Okay, then I have no question. The first that... driveway. <laughs> okay. You don't mind. Okay, that answers my question. Okay. Carmel, can you lead us from Indian Corn Road down the swamp road? Because I went out there, and after you turn off Indian Corn, there's not a road sign anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, when I was I mean, there. How many times did I you going up and down the road today? <laughs> there was not a Carter. sign and there was not a, there was not a mailbox. Right this right this intersection right here. I got that. All the and the sign was up there as opposed to on the designated property. Is this intersection right here? Right. And then when you come down this road, this first drive. Mm -hmm. no. And it dead ends. It dead ends. Into a swamp. Um, swampy yeah, area. It, it's, it's in the flood plain, yes. Okay. And there's a there's a house on the left. Yes. Okay. Yes. 
and then I tried to access it from this drive, and it, it's just, it's it, not it's just, you know, it just stops. And there's a gate or something, <coughs> you know, at this point here, or this point here. But there is no way to get to it from this drive. I was only able to get to it from. And from the second drive, there on the corner, there is a an abandoned mobile home. It's one that's a manufactured home. Any other questions or discussion? Is there anyone else here that has possible opposition or questions about what Mr. Wagner has requested? Was there any contact to your office, Carmel, about any of this? There was another call um, concerning this request, but it was related to a crop design dispute to the south. Um, but yes, there, there was an inquiry, but it was in opposition okay. Any other discussions or questions from the board before we try to get an answer? Can I entertain a motion on this request? I make a motion to Sorry. approve citing D. Sir? I think maybe I should speak up at this time. I'm the one that comes back to your office, so uh, I think this I'm Walton T. Heinberger, <clears throat> 3646, Heinberger Yes, sir. But I have a letter to the effect that I tried to contact Mr. Wagner. Of course, I know you all aren't in business as far as trying to straighten out property corners and landlines and all that. But his line, line comes about nine foot point three tenths inches over in the main on the southwest corner. Sir, that is something that this board cannot address. Well, that's what I was told, but I just want you to be aware of it. Well, I understand, but that's something that you would need to take up legally through attorneys and surveyors to try to determine where it is, but that, that does not have anything with us, and we have no power to adjust any of that. I just want to make you aware, sir. All right, sir. Can I get a motion on this request? I make a motion to uh, approve the request citing D. I have motion from Mr. Fordeman, second. Second. I have second from Dr. Howell. All in favor, please raise a hand. Unanimous, good luck, sir. Hope it works out for you. Thank you, sir. Okay, the next case we'll call is County Case VAR 2014-10 for DTL Investments. Alexander Street and 2607 Sims Street, Valdosta. Yes, sir. Our last request before you today is a variance by BTL Investments. Um, basically, in a nutshell, this area is known to most of us as airport subdivision being developed since the mid 50s. Um, but the former main is the We can't hear something. We can't hear yeah. Sir, if you would come up front. They're talking back there. Yes. 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 But the former name is the Green and Henry subdivision. This applicant does have two lots. Um, I believe two lots may be under contract or he may have already purchased the property. Um, both properties are vacant. And it's his desire to put um, two manufactured homes on both properties. The current zoning, R2 zoning, does allow for all housing types, be it site-built homes, manufactured homes. The R2 zoning restricts this area to double wide, and it's the applicant's desire to put a single wide on each lot. Staff did look at this and, and found that there is a mixture of housing types in this area, and the placement of a single wide would be out of scale with what's already going on in that neighborhood. And with that, Staff made a recommendation of approval um, with no conditions. Okay. Any other questions, discussions from the board at this time? <coughs> Thank you, Ms. Brown. Okay, go ahead. Um, the minimum, the, the width of a single line is what? 
some of them are 14 by 80s, some are 16 by 80s, but the smallest I've seen is 14, 14 width. And what is the minimum width of a double mile? 21. Any other questions? And Mr. Chairman, one lot will be actually facing Henry, I mean Sim Street, and the other lot is going to be facing Alexandria. creation of these. Is it already existing two lots or is it one he's going to? It's already existing two oh, lots. Two lots. Yes. Okay. He has to overcome some board health issues regarding his water and sewer um, because the, the placement of existing wells and drain fields is going to be challenging. Um, but he has to overcome that before he can place on home there. Right. And as far as the health department and wells and septic tanks, there is no variance. You have to be Lowndes County Board of Health regulations or they will not issue. They won't issue your permit. That's correct. That's correct. And by saying that, it's possible maybe if he cannot or whoever the owner is, if they cannot get septic tank and well on each parcel that they could be recombined into one lot and possibly put one unit and give them more room to make septic tank and well. Yes, sir. Okay. Any other questions or discussions from the board at this time? Okay. Is the applicant here or anybody representing the applicant that would like to give us any additional information? Rusty Johnson, 2002, Jerry Jones Drive, by Austin, Georgia. Um, there's a couple of quick things. I want to clear up the access from Henry. Henry comes off Madison Highway where the old National Tractor used to live. Right now, there's a driveway here that has a house there that we also live in. These were, all, these were actually four lots of houses, <coughs> but we had this one combined due to the fact that the line was these two lots are already existing. They've been there since 1951. That's where Al has been flat that way. Alexandria here has a curb here that we will be having to get a permit for a driveway to put into here. We'll also, this is a, the whole property's fence. So what we'll do is we'll take the fence of this property line, put a pole from here across there, and that's how we can access it off the center. So when you go out there now, it looks like there's only one driveway. But when we get in there and start doing our site work, the fence will be looking here, but this access will not access this lot. This will have its own access off of Alexandria. All right. Um, the area, I'm one of the person, there's some opposition, and I think they're here today. But if you'll see, the area of the, this is the subject lots here. This is Madison, this is uh, Henry Avenue coming from Madison Highway here. You have a single wide, again, I own this house here. You have a single wide that is right next to the existing house we already own. You have an existing uh, single wide here. This will be the property that the single wide is on. Now this, property, this single wide is here. So within this block here, you have one, two, three, four single wides already existing. You have others up here, five, six. Go down Alexandria all the way to the end, which is sort of separated. There's multiple six, seven, eight of those down there. But in our right in the immediate area, you have four single lines that are here. Um, I brought a few pictures of those with me. If you'll see, this one is on the corner of. This single wide is right here. This single wide 
is here in, in plain sight of the already existing lot. This one here is down here. Part of our part of what we are asking for is on that table there's a land use table that goes with the uh, property. And part of that states that the mobile homes cannot have metal siding or bottom skirt. Um, 95% of the mobile homes that I deal with have bottom scope. Um, these guys, what this table states is that it states that it has to be brick or some other type of material. There's no way possible I can buy a mobile home, move it in there, whether it be a double wide single wide, you can put brick or anything on the bottom skirt. Bottom skirting is manufactured for the mobile home itself. That's what it's made for. This table is saying that you can't use that. Metal on the mobile homes, I think it says reflective, maybe because of some area there, I'm not sure, but with a mobile home being metal, you're going to be looking somewhere in the early 90s, and there it's the last time you'll ever see metal anyway. They do make them today for special order. It's cheaper to go buy them on cheap. Not metal on metal, which is metal siding and metal roof. So the likelihood of me getting a metal mobile home is not that likely, but if we weren't across one that's in good condition that we can move there, we would like to have that option and not be bound to just vinyl shingle with anything other than vinyl skirting. We will do vinyl skirting. That's the most usual way of doing what we want to say. They're all over the county, and that's what it's manufactured for. Um, I, I have a quick question. Uh -huh. Are you saying that it's impossible to put brick around? It's not impossible. It's just not economic. Okay, so economic. Yeah, okay. It, it's possible. Yes. But you know the vinyl skirting I'm talking about. Yes, I do. Um, it, it's manufactured for the mobile home. If you go and buy one from the factory, most of the time that is what they will send to skirt the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, what the do table, you know the cost differential? I don't, but um, I can tell you <coughs> just off the top of my head, you're probably looking four or five times as much for somebody to come and lay brick around the mobile home. Your mobile home is usually 24 to 36 inches off the ground. So to go up at a 16 or 14 or 16 by 80 brick, it's a lot of bricks to lay. They have to pour a footer around it and then set the bricks on the footer. So it, it's expensive um, to do that. You can't put wood down there because you have termites. You can't take wood to grind because you have termites. Uh, vinyl is a plastic made for that for that reason. That's why it's made to do it. Um, I don't remember the others on the table, but uh, one was a, uh, a five inch overhang on the mobile homes. Single wives don't have five inch overhang and they're very limited amount of bed blocks that do today, unless you're buying them straight from the factory and having them uh, custom made. So you're not going to have five inch overhangs around mobile home that I have. Um, we own close to about 30 properties and mixtures of houses and, and mobile homes. Um, understand that, that part of the worry is that the clientele out there is going to become worse if we put single out. I want to make it clear that we have the ability to put a mobile home there in its current zone. Um, I have met Shannon out there. We've gone through septic systems. There's a, there is a way to get two septic systems. They will be mounted systems. Um, they have been perked. They do not have permits, but they have been perked. Um, so I've been all the way through the process, but we got to the fact of moving a single wide in there. A double wide just helped us up. Um, it is double the cost all the way across the board. Um, a three bedroom single wide and a three bedroom double wide, there's not a lot of difference. It's still a three bedroom, two bath, and majority of the time the double wide is shorter and you have similar to the square foot as you have. So, um, just wanted to, to make that clear. I'm going to ask if you guys have any other questions. Any questions for Paul Heller? All the design standards that are in there. Yes, if I'm reading it right, vinyl is acceptable. Wood basement, concrete, stucco, masonite, vinyl, out for raw materials of like appearance. So he can use vinyl or skirt. He would need a variance to use vinyl because vinyl skirting is not allowed in the R10. Don't. And you also mentioned uh, brick presented a problem in terms of the cost. Mm -hmm. What about concrete? The same. You're dealing with the same type of material um, here. here. You're going to be, it's going to be really expensive. Um, 
what the, the county tried to do when they adopted these regs, they tried, unlike a previous zoning ordinance, we restricted manufactured homes in a certain zone And our uh, advisor, you know, advised that we couldn't do that, that was unconstitutional, um, but we can put design standards on homes in various zoning districts, such as the Ed, pitch, so on and so forth. Um, but they do make, I know manufacturers do make a type of screen. It's, it looks like a fake brick or concrete. Um, it is manufactured. Vinyl lap? What is that? I don't know what vinyl lap What is that? A vinyl. Yes, yes. They make this, this type of skirting. That, this, is that this is actually a vinyl material. Okay, so vinyl skirting is not allowed. So oh, they're all over. Hey. All of these have it all the way around. There's metal well, out there. They, they may predate mm -hmm. the current grid, which means they, they are grandfathered in because they were there. But from this, from the point of the new regs on, that's right. then these are the things that the county has said you've got to accomplish. That's right. That's right. And, and that's what we're here today. If they are an economic detriment, then that theoretically is not something this board addresses. That's something you would address. If it's not economical, then you do something else. Do you have any pictures of the other type of uh, skirting? Rick? I don't have any. Out there, you only took pictures of the well, I, don't, I don't see any brick out there. And there's not any. And, and I, like I said, I've been in this business now for 12 years. And we own close to 30 properties. We probably own 12 mobile homes. And not one of them have anything other than skirting. But right now, Mr. Johnson, we're talking about a specific subdivision. We're not talking about where your 30 might be located. Right. They might be in a mobile home park. They could be. But we're talking about a neighborhood. And one of the, I know that your pictures were specifically there to show single lives in the neighborhood. But it was obvious that there was uh, an omission of the nice homes. There's a home right next door to where you're going to put this house on Sim Street, there's probably one of the nicest homes in that area. And all the way back up Henry, there are nice older homes, but they're nice and neat and well kept. So I think that we need to concentrate on the mobile homes that we're looking at in this area. And, 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 and if they're and new right. or if they have been grandfathered in, that's a major point right there. That's right. And I understand that. You know, the area is, in my opinion, I kind of disagree. It's not that nice of an area. It's okay. Um, you can ride around the corner, and, and there's actually homes falling down. Right now. There are, but are we going to contribute to an existing problem, or are those going to be eventually phased out and uh, put nicer things in and right. go along? And I want to be clear. I can put a double white there. I know. By so right. I can go by. I know. Right. By right, you can right. put a I can go double. by. 1975 mobile right. like it looks terrible. That's not the business one. That's why I mentioned the 30 miles. Right. You know, if we pull if you pull ours up, everything we have is nice. We keep it up. Our renters pay we're at 600 and above. So we're not in the business to to put shabby properties there. Our our intent is to not have to put a double line, but put a single line there. It is our intent. And whether it be vinyl, metal, you know, there's metal double line. <coughs> There's, there's masonite the lights, there's final the lights. Our intent here, what we're voting on is, is whether or not it's seen, but we're asking for a variance to put a single out there instead of a double. I'm very aware of what you're asking. Any other questions, discussions from board at this time? Is there anyone else here in support of this application? Wow. Okay. Did you have anything you'd like to add? Are you satisfied with what's been presented? Um, I came in a little bit late. I'm a partner in the Bressy. I also own Soy Holding Company. Can I get your name? I'm still at your name and address. 8099 in Lake Circle, Lake Park. And um, we don't want to bring the neighborhood down. I own multiple properties in that neighborhood. We don't want to bring the neighborhood down. We want to, we want to keep the neighborhood the same or better. And uh, we have no intention of, of um, I have 19 properties myself. They're all nice. Nothing is shabby. I stay on top of people, and we don't want to have a bunch of shabby places. So we're going to keep the neighborhood nice. So we put a double line there, a single line there. It's going to be taken care of. It's going to be maintained properly. 
right? Is anyone here in opposition to this request? Please come to the lectern, give me your name and address for the record. My name is John Cooper, my wife on the property that she was talking about for the house there. We built the house in 1972. The taxes is terribly high. Uh, we've been paying them and never grumbled about them. Set some according to me looking at a computer for 22 acres. Uh, I don't want this over there. I think that this picture here was not represented the way it really is. Not and, and your objection is comfortable. <coughs> this right here is probably a hundred. Both of them probably a hundred by two hundred. This is a very wet area. If you're looking where the sign is here, it shows that this is a lake. And if you should look at this ditch right near the county on it, they never keep it up very slowly. This is a swamp hole. We who live out there have shallow labels. We'll put the ship tanks in. This place right here is a
I mean, the septic tank will perk, and then he's got enough land to put the septic tank in the well within the regulations. It can't be within so many feet of a property line. It cannot be within so many feet of a well. If they can put the double wide in there. Uh, let's, let's go for if. What he really said was that he talked about expense. Look, he is, he is asking to put a single wide in there instead of a double one. That's, I the, know what he's asking. The very, that, is, that is the variance he's asking for. If we deny that variance as a board, he can still put a double wide in there as long as the health department gives him clearance for a well accepted time. Or the health department go in there and inspect the whole situation. That's the health department, sir. It's not need, us. We need to go to talk to the health department. If you have a problem, right. the health department is the one that's going to be the one to say, yes, you can put a well in, yes, you can put a septic tank, or no, you can't. We'll go to the health department. Yeah, yeah, and I'm, I'm not trying to cut you off, but you're asking us to do something that's not within our power. I understand that, but I'd like to get my side of the story in. I have, I, I've got a place that has a board. I've got a place like in Florida, and we have a board. And I know what the board can do and what they can't do. Thanks. Yes, sir. Is there anyone else in opposition would like to give us any other additional information? Was there any contact to your office or no? There was a number of calls in opposition um, to this request. Um, so nothing in writing, no letters that we could substantiate and put into the minutes? No, sir. Any other discussion, any other questions from the board before we try to decide on this very request? Can you tell us the, uh, give us the 